Hi, and thank you for joining. My name is Jennifer Johnson. I am the Digital Marketing Certificate Associate Trainer with Simply Learn. Today, I'm going to go over email marketing foundations and the introduction to email. Now, let me say this. Email right now has a bad rep. You know what? Let me just backtrack. I think the issue is that there is a large number of marketers who don't have the proper training on using these strategies. And so um, a lot of people think that they're no longer needed because of social media networking. But before I even begin on telling you, introducing you to email marketing, let me just let you know that. I wait a second. Sorry. Hi, my name is Jennifer Johnson. I am from Simply Learn. I'm the Digital Marketing Certificates Trainer. Today we will be discussing email marketing foundations, the introduction to email. So email marketing is another misused concept and strategy that social media provides because a lot of people don't use it effectively. They don't properly build their list. They don't properly send out emails. They don't properly connect with you. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to clear up all those misconceptions that, that you might have about email and give you an introduction and persuade you heavily on why you need to start incorporating email marketing strategies, strategies in your digital marketing plan. So email marketing is a pow powerful channel, channel for you to reach new customers, retain customers, and maximize lifetime value. Let's break it down, buddy. So, in order to get a person in your email database, you have to provide them something called a lead magnet. Some people use a newsletter as a lead magnet on their web page. They're like, hey, you want to sign up for my newsletter? And they just email them their newsletter. That's not effectively utilizing your email database. You effectively use your email database by creating something called a conversion marketing funnel, which starts with a capture page and a lead page and an email marketing system. And they all work hand in hand. A capture page is a one-page website that people can only do one or two things. Enter their information to get the, to get the lead magnet or exit. And the purpose of this is to capture the person's information in exchange for giving, giving them something of value something that they need a answer solved to. So for example, um, a lead magnet would be a, a cheat sheet or a short training or um, a short guide. You know, it's just some, something quick and consumable that you can get people in. And then you um, immediately they are entered into your email marketing system and stored there. Their contact information is stored there. And so once you, they're stored there, they're, that's how you build your audience. That's how you build your customer base. And that's the way you start to do your selling. You don't do your selling through um, sending people to your website. You, you do the selling through email. And that's how you retain your customer because you are nur you nurture your customers in your database. You, you nurture your lead database and your customer database through sending them valuable content from your blog post, okay? And that's called nurturing them. And you also send them specials and you stay in contact with them. Once you have a person's email, you can, it's against um, email regular, it's against um, the Privacy Act for you to spam. Them, but you can provide them, them, them valuable information, okay? And that's by doing that, you create lifetime value with your customers because you have built built that no like trust factor with them. So you know when you have new products and services to come out, people are like, hey, I need that, and I like this person, so let me buy it from them. That's what bigger brands do, okay? Bigger big brands they capture their audience. They nurture them with producing valuable content, and every time they come out with something new, they want to buy it.
strategies. And we're going to teach you how to use those strategies digitally through Simply Learn's digital marketing training. So make sure that you click the link, you click our subscribe button, you click the link below to get more information. Email transformation. So what changed? Oops. What changed in email? See, when people start, first started using email, um, actually for real, when people really first started using the internet and social media, they were spammy until marketers intervened. That's a different story for a different day. And that's a story that I will share with you in my class. So people, um, people start their day by checking their emails. 50% of emails are open on a mobile device, which is either a cell phone or tablet. And the preferred channels are, um, is a preferred channel. 77% of consumers prefer to receive marketing messages through email versus their social media sites. Okay? Email marketing, email marketing efficiency. According to a study by the Direct Marketing Association, a $1 investment can equal $40 in revenue. That is a 400% return on investment, okay? So that means that email has the highest return of um, investment because Email marketing creates loyalty among your customers. As I mentioned, once they enter, enter your email database, you, they, um, they, once they enter your email database, they start to go through your conversion marketing funnel, and that's the process of, the, of you selling their products, your product to them, as well as you will be also sending them your blog post. Because sending your database, your blog post, is a part of syndicating, okay? It's a... Email is a way to expand your customer, customer base and educate them about your company. Yes, you do that. But you're educating them by sending them information from your blog post, okay? So you have that information on your blog, you, know, you send them a short email, I'm like, hey, you want to learn more? Click here, okay? And they click there, they go to your website. That's how you create returning visitors in a loyal customer base, okay? By nurturing them, by educating them. By doing that, you are building intimacy and you are creating the no like trust factor among your customers' base. Challenges with email, spam, 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 spam. Challenges with email. Many people use email to spam you. And they don't send you valuable marketing messages. Spam is wrong. Say no to spam, especially if it's in a can. <laughs> but no, seriously, say no to spam. Spam means that you're just your spam means that you are giving them unsolicited um, advertising about your product, and we'll talk more about that in my class. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, you click the link below, and you can join the class. Okay, you send a valuable messages. Um, when you send spam, you're not going to enter the inbox. But when you send valuable information, the chances of reaching a person's inbox are, are um, higher. But you know there there are techniques and, and tools. There are techniques that you have to use in your in your messages to make sure that you are seen as relevant. You're not seen as excessive, irrelevant, unimportant. And that you're not spamming spamming people. Okay. And we will talk about those 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 techniques in the class. So your email resurgency requires uh, is technol te technological email is technology is mobile is targeting and is personal. It's technology because it you have to use a software. You have to use email marketing software. My favorite is MailChimp. Now, I've been to Aweber, I was at GVO, and I was at GetResponse. And the reason MailChimp is the best, and um, I'm not soliciting for them, I'm just sharing with you the tool that I use. The reason that I like um, MailChimp is because of their, um, their matrices inside. 
and what you're able to do, and how you're, you're how you're able to segment your um, customers. And the only other software that I've seen able to do that is Infusionsoft, and Infusionsoft is expensive. Mailchimp is more affordable for the um for the entry level business with the entry level marketer. Email is mobile, as I mentioned. Seventy-seven, as I mentioned in the previous slide, seventy-seven percent of people check their their emails through their phone. I know I check my emails through my phone all the time. Like having to check my email on my computer is like really, but I do it because I have to. Sometimes because my business emails on my computer, my my I have my Gmail on my cell phone. Um, <laughs> sorry, sticking out loud. And then it's targeting. It's targeting because you have your customer base, and the people that are the people that are in your email base are only people that are interested in what you have to offer. It is the hottest lead list that you, you have, and it's personal because you are you're able to connect with them on a personal level. You can send as many emails as you want a day. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise sending multiple emails a day, but I'm just saying that you can. You can. It's advised to do that if you're, you're in the middle of a launch, but just to connect with them now. The list. Ooh, sorry. The list of email addresses. Ha! In marketing, as an internet marketer, I'm not sure how many of you are internet marketers. I'm pretty sure how many, many of you are. Um, in a marketing field or venturing into marketing, but your list, you're on my list. <laughs> so your list of email addresses can be people that are customers, prospects, leads, contacts, newsletter subscribers. It's basically everybody that you collect email addresses from your website. Customers are people that have bought from you. So let me really break it down to you um, in a format that, that makes sense to you. This right here, where you said newsletter subscribe, this is typically on your website. And I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a secret that I just learned. This is bad. This is bad. Do not use a newsletter as a way for people to opt in your email list because nobody wants your newsletter. If you offer them something of value, like a lead magnet, you will have more people to subscribe to you. People that subscribe for your lead magnet, they are considered prospects. Once they enter your database, they become a lead. And a lead is the same thing as a contact. Once they purchase from you, they become a customer. So newsletters, subscribers, um, moving forward, in the class, I teach you about lead magnets. We're going to have to do your do an assignment on creating your own lead magnet, and you will take newsletter off of your website immediately because you have to stand out. Don't do what everybody else is doing. You have to stand out and don't be boring. Nobody wants your newsletter. I'm just being honest. How many newsletters do you get that you actually read? Like, come on now. Statistically speaking, most people don't open newsletters and is boring. Just FYI. Sorry to bust your bubble. I'm just saying there are going to be a lot of things that I'm going to say is going to bust your bubble, but I'm only doing that because I want you to succeed. I want you to be successful in your digital marketing efforts, and my job is to educate you and tell you the truth and to clarify any misconceptions that you may have because you will not leave my training misinformed and confused and feeling bamboozled. I want you to get the best education possible, which means that I have to clear up things that you thought were right. And I am sorry if I hurt your feelings. Let's move forward. Your email server. Ha! So, your email server acts as a routing and delivery agent for emails. Your email can be your business server through your internal internal hosted, a third party hosting through GoDaddy or Rackspace or an email service provider such as MailChimp. So let's just take let's take a look at um I have I have two out of the three. I actually had the three. I don't I no longer do the third party hosting once I learned about um 
which I learned about having an email service provider. But I do have a um, business server. So let me just take you to my business or my business um, email first. Now let me say this: It's good for you to have two of the, two out of the three. Okay, you have this is my back office. My website is Build Your Dream Business Online. This is my um, email. Okay, this is a direct um, this email comes from the URL is to the URL for my business. It's important for you to have because you should have it's important for you to have because you should be you should have a branded email to your website. And let me also show you my MailChimp. MailChimp is my email marketing system and is also considered an autoresponder depending on the field that you're in. So let me just share with you if you don't if you don't have um a email service server yet, MailChimp is free to start. Okay? And you can log in for free and get and see the, the back office without having to purchase it. Um, if you want upgrades such as being able to automate automate your emails, you have to sign up. And the um, it's very inexpensive. You can get a ten dollar a month membership. And let's just go over some of the features real quick of Mailchimp. So um, let me. Um, so let's look at look look at it. You, they have they you're able to chart your um your list and your campaigns and how many people are opening up your emails you are able to connect your your e-commerce store Shopify Magne Magneto BigCommerce and WooCommerce if it's many brands you can it has a wonderful design in the back office they have powerful tools for you to um, explore your automation. There are different um, campaigns that you can use. I'm going to log in and let you see that. This is actually really, really, really cool. You have different reports. And you have more, you have hundreds and hundreds of integrations. Okay. Um, what I love about it is that is that you're able to do advanced segmentation. Um, and that might segmenting your email list may or may not be a topic is something that we will discuss briefly so let me just um show you something real quick on my mailchimp i'm going to show you the automations and the automations mean that there are um, all the campaigns that you set up for people different marketing campaigns that you set up for your products So let me just show you this right real quick. You have e-commerce, automation, nonprofit, education, music, software, list activity, database, custom integration. Like there, there are so many awesome types of follow-ups that you can do. You can have an abandoned cart, first purchase, um, follow-up campaigns, nonprofits. You have supporter onboarding, membership renewal, events. Reengagement as um, different schools. You have student orientation, course series, student reengagement. You have music downloads, record label information, events, events follow up, software, pre launch information, white page download, product feature engagement, user onboarding, list activities when people are just joining your list, database. You know, you can enter. You know the information, so you can, you know, make it more more personalized. Mailchimp is so cool. Okay. Um, let's just check out the education real quick. It is. It's cool. Like it's it's really 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 cool. And when you are creating your list, you're able to do um. Where is it? This always confuses me. You can you can move your um you're able to have many reports. I'm I'm just getting started um rebranding um 
getting my business off the ground, so I don't have, have this information yet, but it's available to me. So getting back to the slides um, in our presentation, you have to have your branded email. You have to have a branded email to your URL, and you have to have a email service provider. Third-party hosting through your um, you, through your hosting, such as GoDaddy or Rackspace or HostGator, they do offer email service, but it's weird and it's not nice and it's not pretty and it's easy, it's hard to use and like you don't need it. You have you have better options. An email service provider sends mass emails on your behalf and handles all the legalities and sending options and it handles and maintains your list, which is my, why you need to use something as like MailChimp or Constant Contact. Constant Contact is good if you have would be better best if you have a have a healthy advertising budget. But if you are a startup, you should use MailChimp because it's inexpensive. Batch and blast. Now there's different same e your batch and blast are same email sent to all um all your list. So you can have for each marketing campaign, each um conversion funnel, you have a diff for each target market you have you, you will have a different marketing campaign. And you can do a batch and blast to send a um a email to all of them. So um Generally speaking, you have your you have your different marketing campaigns for each for your for each product, and then when you're emailing your list daily, you're sending and syndicating your blog. You're doing a batch and blast because you're sending out valuable information that's relevant to your market, and that's not niche or target market specific. And you assume that everyone is interested in the message because they joined your list. And everybody that joins your list is, has an interest in your mainstream market. It's just that your target market is the is the, is the or your target audience is the specific audience that you're targeting. Your target market is 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 a smaller market outside of that market that that you. The target market is a smaller smaller market out of your mainstream market, and your target audience is a a specific group of people that you're targeting. And your targeted emails are often more effective than batch and blast emails. Um, that actually is six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. Targeted emails are good when you have a specific message that you are sending to a specific target market. But when you are sending out your blog post to your list, you can do a batch and blast. Does that make sense? I hope so. If it doesn't make sense, leave me a message and I will send, I will answer your question. You can leave me a message by leaving a, a notation in the um, comments. You might need to give me maybe 24 to 48 hours to get back to you, but definitely it will be clarified. Opt in, opt out, and unsubscribe. What does that mean? Opt in means that somebody enters, enters their information to, re to receive your lead magnet and they start to get your emails, okay? Opt out means that your, their consent is implied with the initial transaction, and it's an action required to opt out in the future. So if they, people no longer want to receive communication with you, they opt out or unsubscribe, which means that the um, recipient is able to remove their name from your mailing list. Spam. You heard me use this word. Spam. No, spam. No, 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 no to spam. Spam mails are unsolicited. unsolicited and they're unsubscribed. It means that people have gained access to your information through another, through a vendor, and they're sending you um, messages about their product. And that is not cool. Don't do that. And show you about my best practices and spam laws for your email not to be considered spam. As transactional email is something such as a purchase product, requested information, or downloaded information. Blacklist. A blacklist is an untrusted email sender or identified spam source. Do not become one of those people, okay? Learn how to use email effectively because, again, you get 400% ROI, okay? 400%. Email is the largest return of investment 
strategy that you can use digital, digitally. Let me say that again. Email marketing yields the highest return on investment in the digital marketing field. Blacklist limits the ability of organizations or mail sources to send unsolicited email. Don't get caught on this blacklist. Do not become one of those people. Your open rate. When you send an email, you, well, let me backtrack. Everything you do, you have to have measure, matrices, measures, you have to measure your interactions, know what your goals are. Your first goal with an email, you want somebody to read that headline, and like, I need to open that. And that is considered your open rate. Your open rate report of how many people open your email, and it is an unreliable metric. I care to differ, but I care to differ because if people don't open your email, they're not going to read the content in your email. And if people don't open your email, they're not open their email because they're not interested in your email. So if they're not interested, that means you have to figure out why. And nine times out of ten, they're not interested is because your headline sucks and they don't want to read it. So you have to have a compelling headline. So it's good, it's a good metric to know what people open it because they're not opening it. Nine times out of 10 is because it's not engaging, it's not informative, and they're not interested. Email clients report opens differently. Use open rate metrics as a guide rather than a measure of success. Again, yes, that's what I said. You want to see how many people are opening it because if you're sending out 100 emails and only two are opening your emails, you need to figure out what the problem is. You have to be able to diagnose it. A click-through is a measurement of how people interact with your email. And, however, it helps to know how many people took an action to click through your, through your email. This is, what, this is the second thing that you want to measure because the point of the email is to get people to click the link and to engage, learn information, and, once, and they want to buy your product. You want to build up no like trust factor. So if they're not clicking your in, links and reading your information, you're not, they're not interested in you. They're not interacting with you. And that's not what you don't want. You want people to interact. You want people to be interested. Okay? That's what you want. You have to measure that. Email client is a computer program used to read and manage emails. Free mail is a free web based program on manage email. Your email clients. You have the email client, free mail, and web base. An email client is a computer program used to read and manage emails such as um, Outlook. Ooh. So an email client. There are three email clients. You have the email client, free mail, and web based mail. An email client is a computer program used to read and manage emails such as what I have right here with Outlook. Okay, This is my email client. A free mail is a free web-based program to manage email, also called webmail, which you use through like Gmail, or Yahoo, or Hotmail. And web-based email clients act differently from native and email clients.